Good AM folks. Um, one thing I love with all the creators I've ever watched, like Kai Sinead. Oh my god, bro! Oh my god! <laughs> Duke Dennis. Oh! 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 Really, bro. Can I say something real quick? No way. Yeah. I swear to God. Bro. Pretty boy Fredo. DDG Aiden Ross hey! Dude What the hell Logan Paul I've always loved watching them hit their their first million subscribers is always a really emotional moment So seeing Ren actually like Instead of just ignoring the milestone and continuing to grow and press on, he's sharing this moment with all of the people who decided to click that subscribe button by making a video and touching on the subject of hitting a million subs. So I thought I'd just check this out and um, tell y'all how I feel about it. I like, I like watching videos like this where people take a moment. Not like they don't like bask in it. But they just take one small moment and um, they show their appreciation because they know what all it took for them to get to that point in time. One million subscribers defining success. I want to keep this short and sweet because I wrote something that I want to share with you. But um, first of all, I just want to say how grateful I am. Um, I've reached a million subscribers on YouTube, which is a flipping huge milestone. Um, I wanted to say thank you to everyone. People, a lot of people don't realize how much a million, like, every subscription is one individual person from somewhere in the world that decided to hit subscribe because they like you or they feel connected to you for some reason. I mean, I'm just at like 4,000, I think we're at like 4,123 subs so far. It's just, sometimes you, you can't fathom it. It's like, man... This many people like me or dislike me or just feel connected to me enough to where they want to know what's going on. That's, you know, it's just, it's mind blowing. You supported my music over the years, whether you're newly on board or have been here for a while. I want to say thank you to the YouTube reaction community who have gotten behind my stuff in a big way and really helped me reach this goal. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, I wanted to read this. This this passage that I wrote about success is too much for me to remember right now, so bear with me. But yeah, success to me means that I have a responsibility that transcends me. If I have a platform where people are paying attention, then I feel like it's my duty to make that count. Facts. It's far more important because hold on, let me run this back a little bit. But facts because when you have a big platform and you have a lot of influence over people, like an ex assistant Tassian. Or, you know, like any kind of YouTuber. or um, I know I bring up Triple X a lot, but he, he has a lot of influence. Because after he died, he garnered up to like 40 to 50 million subscribers. He probably would have hit 100 million if he was still alive. But, you know, um, just by putting up a single video, you're influencing thousands of people in an instant. Um, like... I looked at the analytics of one of the videos I had. I, f I forgot which one it was, but like, I mean, we're still small, but just, um, I, I couldn't get three views. I, I would be lucky to get three views on the video when I first started out. Um, and I might get like 10 seconds worth of watch time. And now from a video, I probably had up 30 minutes. It said it had. 24 hours worth of watch time on there that that's powerful stuff folks you're you're influencing all these people in an instant so like that's a big responsibility success and people take that for granted i'm gonna stop interrupting though to me means that i have a responsibility that transcends well i'm not but i'm gonna stop interrupting as much it's me if i have a platform where people are paying attention then i feel like it's my duty to make that count it's far more important than my aspirations with music and what I could personally gain. There's a saying that stuck with me recently, which was a rising tide lifts all ships. Back. 
X. Somehow, by finding success for myself has meant that I can find success for the people around me. And that makes me feel very rich. I'm in a very strange position right now where I owe much of my success to the most destructive force in my life, which has been the turbulence of my physical and mental illness. The thing that has by far brought me the most pain has been a source of constant, constant inspiration, which ironically led to creations which brought me the most joy. Creating art which means something to somebody else and can potentially be a companion to somebody else in the dark justifies my own pain and I desperately needed that to be justified. There are a lot of people alive today who live in the dark. It's a place that I'm very familiar with. In the peak of my health problems I was severely underweight, all my meals had to be restricted and blended and I was so tired that I couldn't participate in life. I couldn't socialise, I couldn't watch films, I couldn't read, my bones constantly hurt, even standing in the shower was excruciating and exhausting. And this went on for years, with no answers. Nobody could have ever convinced me during that time that my pain and suffering would be a source for something good. Because it felt insidious. Well, you know what they say. Um, God gives the hardest... Um, challenges to his strongest warriors that he can use as um, as a conduit to reach other people um, to help them make life um, more positive. Does that make sense? Nobody could have ever convinced me that something constructive can come from hurting every day. But I'm here to tell you that if you are hurting every day, don't be afraid. One thing I know to be a certain, to be a constant law of the universe, is that life is inconsistent. Life is beautiful and life is hideous. Life is kind and life is cru cruel. Dancing inside this dichotomy and inconsistency makes me know that you won't hurt forever. Whether that comes from resolution of what you're going through or acceptance of where you are. You won't hurt forever. You don't know yet whether or not your pain conceals gold. It definitely conceals wisdom and it's definitely a catalyst for filling you with empathy. So stand strong, my friends, and don't let the darkness consume you. Because once you know the dark and become intimate with it, you become very capable of wielding the light. You could be instrumental for changing this world for the better. There's nothing humble about shrinking or doubting yourself because you are large. You can be ferocious and you could be magnificent. For the medical industry, who too often let people fall through the cracks, it's your duty to do better. For the people living in the light, who have I- And that's a fact. I remember one time I was in a car wreck um, and I was still, well, this was like my last day of college. And not because I completed it, but because of the situation, circumstance, I, I had to drop out. Because number one, I couldn't afford it. And number two, well, I, I, I could afford it, but I didn't want to afford it because it just didn't seem like worth the time. But I got into a car wreck, got taken away in a neck brace, and the doctor suggested they keep me overnight. But they released me the same night I went in. And on my way out, when my parents were rolling me out in a wheelchair, the nurse said they discharged me early because I didn't have insurance. But here's the funny thing. I did have insurance. They didn't ask me if I had insurance because I was a young black male in college. So, yeah, sometimes... What he just said, they, the medical industry's got to do better, man. Stepped out of their shadow or have never had to walk beside it, it's your responsibility to pull out, put out untainted love. I but that's messed up, though. They just, they assumed I didn't have any. Your own greed. Because that's the stereotype or the common theme, I guess. Desire to ferociously expand and decisions rooted in self-interest can benefit ourselves in a material sense but can be very destructive to the hive and the world around us, ultimately hurting ourselves. So we really must consider that if we're going to step into a bright future. As humans, we have an incredible potential and it would be a shame to throw it away. So community, humanity and changing our relationship with the natural world so it leans more towards homeostasis must be a priority, priority number one. 
If you're watching this and there's a knot tied up in your stomach with bitterness, anger or hatred for your fellow human being, be with it, feel it, understand it, express it and then let it go. You're hurting. Give yourself love, forgive yourself and then project that love outwards and the anger will pass. We have a decision in every interaction to tilt the world towards heaven or hell, towards Jannah or Jahannam, utopia or dystopia, and some people's ideas of heaven will be another's image of hell. So tread carefully, but treat those differences with respect. Tapestries are made beautiful because of the variety in the sum of their parts. <laughs> Thank you to one million people inside this rich tapestry for the opportunity for me to try and spread my own vision of what I believe to be good. And thank you for justifying my pain. Thank you. I love you. Oh man, he almost started crying, dude. I don't know how I'm going to be when this page hits a million subs, but like, that's a lot of the stuff he touched on is very true. I feel like the most creative and the most influential people in the world come from at least in most cases come from a lot of pain and that doesn't have to always be outside physical or living space pain sometimes it can be mental and emotional pain because on the outside looking in everybody thinks i had it good because i had both my parents in my life i didn't come up in the ghetto i wasn't destitute or you know broke or at least you know from what it seemed on I, I was my dad was able to like give me like pairs of shoes like every you know all the time you know we were we could afford to go on vacation and do different things like that but mentally um especially when I wasn't around my family I could be surrounded by people and a lot of times I would still feel alone I struggled with depression. I struggled with self-image. I struggled with a, a lot of those things, you know, being in that dark place, being in the hole, seeing, being the one that's making everybody laugh and seeming like the super chill person who doesn't deal with negative when really you're the person in the room who's probably struggling more than most everybody else around you. But I'm not going to keep um, jabbering and holding you guys up. But um, the biggest thing I got from this video that, you know, we just watched from Ren was something I always told myself no matter how bad my situation got. Whenever you're really down bad, if you're watching this and you're, hom you're homeless, if you're watching this and you got more bill than money, if you're watching this and you're struggling with depression, struggling with darkness, struggling, maybe you're in a relationship that you don't, that you're stuck in. Maybe, maybe you just don't know where to go. Maybe you don't know what to do. Maybe you're, you're just lost. Um, whether you're around somebody that cares about you or for, or if you're by yourself, just repeat, repeat after me. Like say this three times out loud or say it as many times as you need to um when i was working 12 hours seven days a week and i had just lost my car i was out of college i didn't know what to do um i didn't have any heat in my car um windshield was frozen solid and i was making ten dollars an hour shaking on my way to work at four o'clock in the morning um, and I, I was back in my, my mom's house, you know, I was like, it's going to get better. 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 You know, when you feel like you're on top of the world and like now you're not even at square one anymore, you're like at square negative five, you know, just, just tell yourself it's going to get better. And it always does. It will get better. It, it always gets better if you just choose to believe that. Um, when you have faith, which is, um, believing things will improve, even though you don't see it, um, and you actually put effort towards having that positive change in your life, 
um, things start happening that you don't see. And the life that you want or the improvement that you want slowly starts to happen. Um, it'll either slowly start to happen or it'll happen when you least expect it to. But um, just choosing to hold on to that, I feel like choosing to hold on to that will take you really far. And hopefully one day somebody can look back on some of these words and be like, hey, you know, he was right. It, it does get better. But I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, I appreciate all the new subs and the new fam for reaching out to me on Instagram. And I hope you guys have a good day, morning slash night, depending on what time zone you're in. Take care of yourselves. It does get better.